So far during the Rainbow Laces campaign, we've heard from a fan perspective and my own perspective, but we haven't heard from the manager's perspective or some of the players. That's why I decided to catch up with a few of the players and the manager himself over Zoom to talk about some issues relating to LGBTQ plus inclusivity in sport, well, in this case, football, and so posing some questions about the Rainbow Laces campaign. To view the whole discussion, you can watch it on our YouTube channel or the iFollow app. Thank you and enjoy. My first question is, what does the Rainbow Laces campaign personally mean to you? I just think it's another good thing that <clears throat> just brings awareness to, like I said, there shouldn't be any sort of prejudice in football, no matter what sort yeah. of colour, creed, what, uh, sexuality, any, any of those sorts of things. Football is the universal sport of the world. So everybody in the, uni in the world should be able to have access to it and enjoy it the same as anyone else. I think it's a symbol of unity, to be honest. I think, yeah. um, I think it's, it's massive, really. Um, I'm not aware, I don't think there is um, a footballer who's come out as gay or... Um, yes, yeah, so I'm unaware of that. So I think that it, it's a tool that can hopefully allow people to be the self, really. I think it means... Uh, being inclusive, um, bringing people together to, you know, think about um, the, the the community and uh, the people uh, within it, and make make um, make them feel comfortable uh, and make people aware that, you know, there, there are still um, problems, I suppose, in uh, in dealing with, you know, the situation, especially in football. Hmm. And a bit of a topical question. Do you know the name of the first footballer who came out in, in English football in the 90s? Uh, I think, is it Justin Fashnu? Yes, it is. <laughs> you got no. it, well done. <laughs> no. No. If I said famous FA Cup goal against Liverpool for Norwich, Norwich City, what, does that ring a bell? No, I can't say it does, no. Uh, Justin Fashnu. Yes, well done. <laughs> Charlie Ragland got it. <laughs> uh, Charlie got it, did he? Charlie got it. Do uh, Boyle didn't. So I was a bit. They're, they're, like, a, bit they're, they're a bit younger, so I, I I grew up remembering that. So yeah, and I said to them, um, I said to um, Boyle um, about the famous goal in the FA Cup for Norwich against Liverpool, and he, he still didn't get it. And then I said also, he's he's the brother of um, John Fashnu, and he was like, oh, it obviously he's gonna be a Fashnu, but I don't know. It anyone like any of the fashion news so I was like oh the bloke from London <laughs> Gladiators yes <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't say that actually to be fair <laughs> so moving on to my next question how would you personally react if one of your coaching staff or players came out as openly bisexual gay in the future um would you be supportive of them and how would you show them your support personally uh it wouldn't bother me it's you try, it, obviously you've got to try and support them because it, it is a big thing there's a big mm. um, sort of stigma around it at the minute within football that there has to be gay footballers just just the numbers will tell you that but obviously people are too frightened to come out so in terms of myself it doesn't bother me you know I, 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 a lot of people that are friends of mine that are um, gay bisexual so yeah, it makes, it makes no odds like you said as long as they're doing the job properly that's what I'm interested in Exactly. And obviously, the, the fact behind that is if they do need support, but that's the same as the players in terms of whether that's a mental health problem, uh, a problem at home, any sort of, whether it's alcoholism or gambling or any sort of pressure, my job is to try and support players, staff to make them feel as comfortable as possible to be able to do their job properly. So whatever exactly. I need to do is to, to help them, if that was to be the case, is to, uh, is to support them. Mm. I'd be massively respectful, to be honest. I think it's a very brave thing to do, ultimately. Um, and for me, it shows leadership, to be honest. So I'd be probably definitely backing them um, 100%. And I don't think, well, not, nothing would definitely change with the way where we are around the place and around us teammates. I think it, everything's exactly the same. It's just mm. I'd have probably, if anything, I'd have a little bit more, I wouldn't say respect, but... I'd probably, it'd probably tie me closer to them because they've been totally honest. So I think that for me, that authenticity is something that I, I can recognise in people and I like in people. I like it's a trait I think I have myself and I, 
like it in other people. So it'd be something I'd definitely be respectful of, yeah. Well, of course, I, uh, they'd have my support. Um, I, I think, I don't know whether it's easy for me to say that um, because, you know, it, personally in my life, I don't, I don't have to worry about that, the, the, the threats or the complications of it. Um, yeah. But no, in terms of support that, that I would offer, I would just obviously, um, whatever they needed really, you know, um, somebody to talk to, somebody to, you know, if they, if they needed to to sort of let their thoughts out, you know, that um, I'd always be somebody to, to, to listen and, um, and I'd encourage them to, you know, be themselves and come and, you know, if they need to speak out, then they, they, they should be able to, to be themselves. Yeah, that's that's a great that's a great response. And obviously, talking about the sort of LGBTQ landscape a bit more, a lot of LGBT younger players out there, so like myself, um, we we start playing at a young age due to fear of being rejected down the line. Um, do you think do you think we are now in a position where um, LGBT players, if they want to pursue a career in professional football, will have the full support of the dressing room? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to think. I'd like to think so. I mean, it's very difficult to say that, or it would be um, naive to say that somebody along the way wouldn't, um, you know, might might make them feel uncomfortable or might make them feel bad. Um, you know, just like there are plenty of people in society who are still of that mindset, but on the whole. Um, I certainly think that a dressing room now, um, in the last sort of five to ten years of obviously it's you know in my career, um, I would say that most dressing rooms would be supportive, um, just of a fellow teammate, regardless of what any situation is, you know, um, whether it's to do with their sexuality or you know racism and and um, or any any problems that they may 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 have on and off the field. Um, I just think a, dress, a good dressing room is is all about support and um, yeah. footballers. It's actually probably, you know, when you talk about young players, I'd probably say as, as players get older, they become more aware of, you know, societal uh, issues and and they, they they think about it more. So, you know, it's, it's probably, I can't say whether it is or isn't, but it might even be easier as you get older. Probably when there is one, I think it, there is like a bit of a a brick wall at the minute. Um, because like you said, the numbers the numbers are there that it's impossible they can't be a gay footballer. Yeah, exactly. So I think once it, it'll be an avalanche. Um I, but I generally think now it's it's such an open topic now. There's it's not a taboo subject. Mm. Um so for you know, I, I don't know why no one has come out. Um yeah. but I don't think I generally don't think players would have any sort of because the same stigma was the sort of thing of you know, I played with someone like Clark Carlisle who was suicidal he was a, he was an alcoholic he suffered mm. from depression he, he had everything going and we never knew because he was too frightened to come out for this a similar sort of thing so and he ended up trying to kill himself yeah I, I think the players if if someone did come out within our group 100 percent, they'd be supported absolutely no problem at all yeah and obviously like you said it's not really a taboo nowadays if you look at the women's game like there's so many really good players in the WSL who are actually out so obviously hopefully that can be replicated in the future in the men's game hopefully yeah I think it's just a time thing I think football seems to be behind the times and quite a lot of this sort of thing it is it is a macho sort of sport it's deemed as that but it's no more macho than rugby and you look at you know people like have, have come out in the rugby world um so yeah it's, it's something I can't really answer because I, I don't know why I think the support would be there now 100% 20 years ago, it might be slightly, well, it would have been slightly different because um, the stigma that was attached to it, the the almost the stereotype is that all gay people look and sound the same way. I think I think we've moved on now. I think I think everyone's moved on now in terms of as long as you're a decent person, you're a decent person. I think it's definitely moved along. Um, I think as a society as well, we've moved along. Obviously, in football, we've got a massive thing with Black Lives Matter and there's a lot of inclusivity and diversity within the game. So I think it's just another element of your sexuality, just another element of that diversity. So um, I think it is it is moving towards an environment. I think there'll always be, well, not always, but I think there'll be still still some people who have like a um, an old-fashioned view on it. But for me, I think it's 
the majority is starting to turn now towards uh, people who are, are who they are. And it doesn't matter whatever industry you're in, if you're in football or you're in any other one, if you if your sexuality is that way, that's how you are. So no matter what colour your skin you are, what sexuality you are, everyone's the same. And do you think opposition fans would use um, someone's sexuality as a weakness to target that player, um, say, when they go to that ground? Um, to start with, I think they probably would, yeah. But from my point of view, I think, um, well, it is a little bit different to somebody being fat, but the opposition fans um, target any sort of weakness they can get. And I think as footballers, you've got to understand it's not necessarily personal, to be honest, a lot of the time, because you're just playing against their team and it's obviously people say it's banter and sometimes it can definitely cross the line. But ultimately, I think football fans, when they're in a group, it it definitely changed the, the dynamic of things. I think everyone as an individual, as a football fan, would probably wouldn't say half the things they'd say when they're in a group at the game. So it's just, I guess that's the way of a crowd sort of thing. So, I think that's I think, the problem as well in terms of the banter, the banter and how far you can go before you cross that line. I think so, yeah, because obviously people have different opinions of, and people can, people construe things differently to take things mm. differently to people have a different perception of how things are said. So I think it is, it is hard really. You've got to be careful with what you're saying because you don't know what someone's going through. You don't know what someone's thinking and feeling. So mm. um, something could, something that you say that you might think is literally a joke might really hurt someone. So you've got to be careful, yeah. You know, we obviously talk about coming out as, as being gay, but it's, it's the same with the racism. It's the same with the mental health. It's the same with lots and lots of different people suffer from different problems and different anxieties. And ultimately... Mm. All, all these types of movements are bringing awareness of this. It's, like you said, as long as you're an half decent person, I don't think anyone really cares what what sex you like. What it, everyone's got problems. Everyone's got stresses. Just uh, just be a good person. Ultimately, for me, I think whoever is the first player to come out will be supported wholeheartedly, and and genuinely as well. Not just paying lip service as well, where it's. In front of the camera, you're saying one thing and you're walking out into another room and then you're whispering in the corridor saying this, that and the other. I genuinely think that it'd be just, well, well, exactly the same. They'd just be one of the lads. Yeah. And, and as long as they're doing their job properly, I can assure you now, if it's a centre forward and they keep scoring 20 goals um, a season, the players won't care. It's, it's, as long as whoever it is, is performing, that's what any, every, every, anybody wants. So in terms of inclusion, 100%. But do you think one of the problems we have for gay players to come out is um, toxic fan culture within opposition fans, maybe using someone's sexuality as a target just to hell abuse at them? Do you think that's a problem that's stopping players coming out, maybe? Uh, probably. I'd imagine that would be the biggest fear. Because I mm -hmm. think the, the, the player in, who we're talking about, whoever it is, would know the players that he's working with every day. And he can sort of control that and know the response that they'll probably get. But they can't control 40, 50,000 Chant, mm. chanting abuse but again I think the way uh, the education has been I think it's not like the 80s and 90s where there was the terrorist chanting I think it would get reported pretty quickly I think mm. there is things like social media so people can report that type of thing so I don't think you're going to see you know the cop 25,000 people shouting some sort of homic abuse or some sort of homophobic sorry uh, song at, at a player because they're gay because it just wouldn't get accepted at all now. Yeah, no, but I think the problem we've got is that I think still in many Brighton games, a lot of opposition fans seeing chants against the Brighton fans, which are classified as homophobic, homophobic. So obviously that still does exist and we need to try and hopefully get rid of that in the future. And obviously campaigns like Rainbow Laces are there to share the stories of um, LGBTQ plus people and fans. And hopefully we can make strides forward in that sort of Yeah, sense. I think that's that's... That's more an historical thing in terms of just something that's attached to the club. I think it's it's the same with the Tottenham fans, you know, that they have yeah. their own issues where they chant their own songs. And mm -hmm. I don't think it's meant to be offensive. It's just a chant. So it's, it's, it is getting the balance. But like you said, when it comes to personal abuse or any, well, any sort of abuse, like I said, I keep repeating myself, but abuse, yeah. it's, it's, it's unacceptable. It's, it's a form mm -hmm. of bullying. I've got two young kids. I wouldn't want them to get bullied in any sort of shape or way. So I wouldn't want anyone, any of my players to be bullied either because mm. 
ultimately, like I said, as long as you're a half decent person, you should be able to crack on with your life and do whatever you want to do that you feel free to uh, to pursue. Exactly, that's the attitude we, we should all have. So it's great to see a manager coming out with, a, with those sort of words. It's really encouraging for people like me to, to hear that. So thank you for that. Mm-hmm. Finally, how do you think the Robins fans would react if a Cheltenham player in the near future did come out? Do you think they would get the full support of all the Cheltenham fans? Again, I, I think supporters are uh, pretty fickle. So whoever the mm. player is, if they're doing their job properly, they'll get supported just just as much as anybody else. Um, the, the downside might be that this is the, the problem that might be they're not performing so well, it's what comes their way. So yeah. that, that would be the thing that would need to be monitored because they're having a bad game. It's not because they're gay. It's because they're not, they're not performing particularly well. So that would be the worry in terms of, I'm guessing, that the stigma that you know supporters need the education of anything that was shouted like that. They need to be ejected out of the ground straight away. Um, yeah. But I think this, I think... Well, I think the supporters, our club, I think they're good supporters. I don't think, you know, we're not historically, I don't think they're known for our hooliganism or anything like that. We're known as a family club. And I think that they would be the same as what I'd expect anyone else in this life that we live in now to to deal with any sort of news like this. And I think, think to be honest, it's um, it's going to be needed, really. And the first one that does, I think the there'll be a huge amount of respect for him because it's going to be a very brave thing to do. And um, I think that that's all I think. I think people will be respectful of it, to be honest. And for for me, it, like I said before, it shows shows leadership. It shows the strength of someone's character that can they can say, this is, this is me, this is who I am. Take it or leave it. So exactly. for me, I think um, fans would... I'd imagine fans would have a similar view to that, to be honest, and then hopefully it can allow, inspire and allow other people to, to be the same as well. Exactly. Hopefully the fans would be on, on their side. I'd, I'd, I'd like to think they would be, but you can't speak for everyone, can you? So, yeah. You know, a football club on the whole, a fan base, um, you're always going to have disagreements about anything, you know, in the world. And, and uh, well, I'd like to think that there would be um, support for that for that individual, you know, especially because we're still at a stage where there aren't a lot of people who have, who have come out and, and uh, stated that they are, you know, uh, part of the LGBT community. Um, so I'd like to think if they're one of the first, they would definitely get the, the backing and, and, that, and the support to encourage other people. As you've just seen there in that discussion with Michael Duff and the players themselves, it is clear to see that the majority of the coaching staff and the players are accepting and welcoming of the LGBT Q plus community, which is great to see as we aim to make sport a more inclusive and safer environment. This is also great news for any future players that want to come out, knowing that they'll have the majority of the manager's support at whichever club they are at, and the majority of the dressing room will also support them, which is also great news. Thank you for watching.